Hi, welcome back to the Dylan Rounds case. Welcome if you're currently here in the live premiere, I appreciate it. Today we have an interesting map observation analysis to do. It's very interesting regarding Brenner's burnt down trailer in Montello, Nevada. From the looks of satellite imagery, it has vanished, disappeared. It's no longer there. And perfectly, I can show you the before and after photos from 2019, 2022, and from the looks of it, 2023. So in the format of the trailer in its normal standing structure, then after the fire and what it now looks like. So make sure to stick around for this video to truly understand the change in the environment. Okay, and we can get some discussion points going as well, but we don't just stop there. You know, on top of all that, I have found the location of that Area 52 bar, okay, which is in somewhere in Montello, Nevada. It's actually got a specific official name, which when you type it in on Google Earth, it actually shows up and it's almost like a little mini neighborhood, right? If you don't know really much around this bar, it's whether it's conspiracies, um, theories, ideas, concepts, rumours, BS or facts to do with a location, a bar, where the likes of Don Haightley, maybe Brenner, etc, etc, Chase Fenstra would gather in the past and somehow tying it in with the Dylan Rounds case, going down there, discussing stuff, covering their stories, getting their tracks cleaned not literal tracks, but their own steps in the case, right? Is it 100% true? I don't know, but I'm just glad I found the location of this talking point, which was raised in the past by Quinton Lewis, okay? So we can take a look at that today, so you're familiar with the area and you can finally see it. We can get some discussion points started around that area, okay? And as well, all throughout this video, make sure to make use of the live chat, share your thoughts, opinions, reactions, and whatever else as we focus on the Dylan Rounds case and everything that orbits around it and how it could tie in or, you know, if we can tie up loose ends or debunk, debunk stuff along the way. Add, not 100% definite, but we might be able to clear up a few loose ends as well in today's video regarding the previous video, which was covering Kurt Wadsworth. Now, if you don't know what the hell that is and you haven't checked the video out, make sure to do so, so you understand what happened, what we talked about, and the photos as well with the suspicious white looking vehicle to do with potential evidence being taken away from the Grangehead property. I'll provide a link down below in the pinned comment section. Make sure to check that video out and there'll be a few additional links as well in between if you wish to visit them. So, bit of a bitty bit video but quite a few different things to get through, okay? We'll follow a certain order and structure so the flow is there. We can also check out some additional coordinates which were provided by a guy called Ricky someone who's been out there supposedly searching for Dylan, who's also been around the chop shop too, okay? So, wow, a lot of heavy map-related stuff today. Make sure you stick around for most part of the video to truly understand it, as you probably can see some patterns here and there. A couple, a couple of Salty Pancake viewers over time tend to watch the first 10 seconds of my video and then claim that they know it all and call me out for not including this or for saying that wrong when in actual fact if they actually watched the video from start to finish they would get a different reality and a different understanding but they're not going to stick around right they've got a short attention retention span some of them not all some okay so what we also need to do is check the comments out and that's how we can tie it in with the possible debunking of Kurt Wadsworth with the previous video. And we'll probably do that one first because it ties in with the additional comments as well in the background from the last video 
answer any questions, analyse any new potential interesting information and all that. Fuck me, there's a bit to do. But I think just to set the scene, okay, if people are joining in right now, I know maybe the live video premieres are a bit earlier now than how they used to be, but it's more practical for me because previous it wasn't as healthy because of uh, timing and uh, bedtime, okay? Don't want uh, a full-on sleepy Rafi because then the accuracy drops. But then again, wow, you think of it now. I have made over 271 videos on the Dylan Rounds case. I have almost uploaded a video every single day, almost one hour long or longer every single day for over nine months straight. You see these bigger YouTube channels which come on in here and there that will cover the Dylan Rounds case, give the default official updates, but none of the backstory stuff. They don't clear up any loose ends. They don't tie up the confusion and the destruction along the way. They don't do the cleanup job. They just regurgitate the story or the basic update, right? Maybe they've got a little bit more access to sources, individuals, Fair enough, the more of an established channel they're going to be looked at, listened to more than a channel like me, but they're not as consistent, right? These bigger YouTube channels come on in here and there, upload the odd video on Dylan Rounds. Okay, I've been doing it for over nine months, almost every single day, nearly every single video being one hour to two hours long. Fuck me. But there's a consistency. You get into a certain cycle, it, you know, and as well, just about all of it, valid material, valid discussions. That's the most important part. Sure, other people can do six to seven long hour live streams, but is it a little strained? Yes. Maybe an hour's worth is talking about Dylan. The other five hours worth is talking about food, potatoes, coffee, random stuff, right? And you got to sieve for it all. It's just not quite practical. But here, it is more practical. And of course, in recent time, we've been tying up loose ends left, right and centre. All good. We've been screwing those screws back in, which were a bit loose. A few nuts and bolts here and there, tying them back up. Obviously, some out there can't be undone, but because you already are undone. <laughs> There's a fucking stupid way than that. Wow. Right, so one other little thing that some people mentioned was with Lance Kelly. There was a situation there, either yesterday or the day before, Lance Kelly being at the motel, wherever it is, whatever it's called, within, is it Wendover or near to Wendover, I believe? And I guess the car's been repaired in the meantime. That's why we've seen those recent live streams of Lance Kelly walking about the area, right? Doing the filming. The first time swatting took place. More and more people now are confirming that Salty Pancakes was responsible. Uh, I think there's a comment on that in the videos, what we'll check out in a second, okay? But there was another recent video, 10 minutes long, and it was to do with Lance Kelly not, well, would you call it arguing, talking to the receptionist or someone that works at the motel place wanting a refund because the electricity and maybe the water was impacted, not working. So it's not exactly great conditions to be in. You didn't pay for that service, but they weren't given a refund. And because Lance Kelly was doing a live stream recording it all, the, the worker or the workers in the motel were saying that we'll call the police if you, you know, carry on filming and being here. Some comments people that were talking about it saying that Lance was getting a bit aggravated or getting a bit angry. When I watched it myself, his tone of voice didn't get that bad. He didn't seem that aggressive. 
okay, a little bit frustrated, but you know, if you deserve a refund and you don't get it, then of course you're going to be a bit annoyed, right? If as well, maybe to do with money issues, then it's going to add on to the pressure as well. I know people do comment on the background stuff or the lack of background things going on with certain people, but you know, all all I'm focused on or try to focus on is the Dylan Rounds case and in a way Lance does revolve around it because he has been out there searching or at least trying to search with time, right? I mean, take this as a comparison, okay? You've got Lance Kelly going out there day after day or at least in the past day after day trying to search for Dylan in the hot weather or maybe the cold rugged rough terrain maybe at times a little bit dangerous where he goes going into the mine shafts the tight ones the mines and caves he's doing that some people say he's doing it but it's more so for the money part making money whilst going out there searching a bit of manipulation going on is it really that bad when you compare doing something like that at least supposedly going out there trying to search and then someone that sits on a bed and does only fans there's a bit more action there's a bit more effort involved right in what lance kelly does in comparison to someone that sits on a bed and ooh, come at me mm. now is that gonna make me turn into some kind of hypocrite down the line when i'm on only fans i don't know i don't think that far ahead okay Shh. but you get the idea. There's a level of effort, physical effort, because even just walking around in the area, right? I mean, maybe I see it differently with Lance Kelly compared to how other people do, just because I was around the Kenny Veach case in the past, when you had some hikers or the odd hiker that did go out there, put lots of effort in, did get injured at times, got sick, got ill when searching about for Kenny Veach, the missing hiker, in dangerous conditions, dangerous terrain, and there was a bit of a money aspect there, whether it be support through joining membership or clothing, you know, background stuff to help him continue doing it, right? Maybe that's the only reason why I see it from that angle, because I saw it back then. But back then, I just, I don't think Super Chats were a thing. When did Super Chats come on in? I don't know. I only noticed the Super Chat thing when I first started covering the Dylan Rounds case, but I didn't really click on it to begin with. It was only down the line I noticed. Weird, just little backstories like that, right? But, you know, with this recent thing at the same motel as where he got swatted previously, I can understand now why people are assuming and making links. If the motel workers have threatened to call the police because of Lance Kelly's behaviour or how he's talking or just because he's simply doing a live stream recording... I can see that crossover with how a few days beforehand the police did come and check in on him when they thought he was shouting and threatening to kill people, which wasn't the case. But you see, if you're in the same area, police come one day and then a few days later, the workers at the place say, we'll call the police on you for your behaviour. There's similarities there. So I can understand why people would tie one thing, one person with the swatting, right? But from what people have said and those people watching other live streams, someone else has admitted it, supposedly being responsible. Some of you will know, supposedly Salty Pancakes, right? I've not really had time to watch that live stream wherever it is where he admitted it, but I said there might be a summary of comments regarding that stuff when we get into the comments section of this video okay i understand the um the length of these videos at times could be a, a, a little bit longish but I'll, I'll tell you something okay 
when I, every video I make, I have no clue how long the videos will be. I have no clue. And yet, they tend to be around the same amount of time as each other, right? The 1 hour 21 minute mark, the 1 hour 44 minute mark, the 1 hour 56 minute mark. You know, you see these weird patterns over time, numbers keep coming on up. It was like that with the Kenny Veach case. Though with the Kenny Veach case, it was more eight, um, 26, 27 minute videos, 33, 36 minute videos, the odd 42 minute video, a couple of 55 minute videos, and then pushing it one hour plus minute, uh, one hour videos, right? But that was for like the deeper analysis. With the Dylan Rounds case, because of the format, the structure changing live video premiere, that's been taken into consideration. And it's just simply more to cover, right? Might not be as mysterious, but it's more deeper, the Dylan Rounds case, because of the amount of characters involved or at least talked about at some point, okay? And the range of all the different locations and possibilities, both of where Dylan could have been taken and where certain suspects have gone at a point in time where it be disposing of evidence or just visiting somewhere just before or just after Dylan went missing and trying to track those places down to see if there's anything of interest whatsoever, right? So, welcome if you're still here for being patient. I appreciate it. If you have just joined, don't worry. You've not really missed anything, but if you do want to catch up, rewind back to the beginning. What we are going to do right now is go into the comment section of the last video, tie up loose ends with the Kurt Wadsworth situation and the items being taken from the Grangehead property from the past August 21st. We'll look through that. As well as some additional comments regarding the swatting of um, Lance Kelly and then some of her comments in between. Once we've got through that, then we can move on to the main feature of this video, which is the map analysis and changes to Brenner's burnt down trailer in Montello. And then once we've done that, then we can transition into the additional coordinates which were provided by Ricky. That's the order. Make sure to stick around for all of it. And let's now begin. Here we are adjusted to the newest. We've got a couple of comments to get through this time. They're a bit longer in length, but that's fine. Tom Evans says, why would anyone think they had the right to prove anything from a possible crime scene? I have sided with Kurt over many things. This was a very stupid mistake on his part. Somewhat unforgivable. I want to ask Kurt what he took. I want to hear his answer. Here's the thing, because it's related to the Dylan Rounds case, and, you know, okay, 28th of May, Kurt went down to take the items away from the grain shed, August 21st. Some time has passed between those months, right? But because Dylan's still missing at the time, as, like, right now, it's like a delayed crime scene, if you want to call it that still feels like there's stuff there ongoing and from what we've heard of recently as well with the area being dug up for whatever reason and that's present day present day and yet Kurt Wadsworth back then to an extent disrupted the area was it appropriate I don't know did he have permission yes from the looks of it I guess if he only moved stuff he owned, then it's not as big of a deal. But it's that possibility of some items could have played a role in Dylan's murder. Not so much items used to take him out, but if they were nearby in the proximity, which could have caught some form of DNA upon, upon it, right? But let's just check the responses and see what other people have to say. Badger says, possible he was holding on to things for Brenner since he believes he's innocent. Possible. Maybe. Holding on to stuff so it doesn't go to waste or it doesn't get stolen. You, know, you look at Kurt Wadsworth, friends with Brenner. Kurt being in denial that Brenner is the one responsible. And even when Brenner been charged, 
Kirk couldn't seem to get over that fact. Donnie says, I want the shack lady to take a polygraph test. Okay. Why do you think the shack lady needs to take a polygraph test? Let me know your thoughts. Uh, Regarding the shack lady, I don't know if it's exactly true. I kind of roughly overheard it. In Pancake's recent live stream on 28 Alice channel, okay, when they were talking about the stream keys for that live stream event, what Pancakes is going to do going down to Wells, Nevada to do some investigation stuff to do with Dylan and maybe Aiden. I heard, the, I heard Salty Pancakes say the shack lady bought a stream key. Interesting. I wonder why the shack lady did that. Only because... When you think of it, the way the shack lady has been treated by Salty Pancakes at times, why would you support him in that way? Maybe there's a deeper reason behind it. There's a deeper understanding each one has between each other, possibly. But you kind of see that switching and changing, you know, talky-talky, then, oh my God, How could one say such things like that to me? And then, oh, I'm going to pay for this so I can watch the clip. Maybe it, well, not, maybe not with the shack lady. Maybe the shack lady is just curious to see what it's all about. Like, this is the thing. As I said, you will get people that will join people's channel memberships. Not because they want to support the content creator, but they just want the juicy gossip and intel and information which non-members wouldn't see, hear, receive. And once they've got that gossip, then they can maybe spread it to other people. Is that going to happen with this video footage of Pancake's visit, whatever it is? I don't know. But it's just interesting, the shack lady's name being mentioned. If the shack lady is present right now or later on, feel free to share your thoughts. You know, is is it true or whatever? End of the day, people can do whatever they want. You know, if they want to buy this or buy that, they can. No harm in just um, asking why, possibly. Okay, let's move on. Tom Evans says... To everyone, I owe you all an apology. I spewed crap before I used my brain. Raf's video today clarified a lot to me. Kurt picked up feed, feed tubes and a water tub for Brenner's animals. If there was anything else I didn't know what it would be, like I say, I'm sorry for my foolishness. I wouldn't say Tom did anything wrong. Not from the looks of it. This is why... The title of that video was somewhat vague, okay? You you don't want to be going too hard in with certain language if you're not sure. So I used loose wording and we're, from the looks of it, receiving answers as we go. So we can tie things up very quickly. And the flow is present because it's from video to video and it has relevance to the theme and topic we're talking about. Move on, we've got Patsy. What does Patsy say? Oh, God, Patsy, that's a bit of a long one. Patsy says, hi, Raph. Great video, thank you. You're welcome. Scott Natal was in Lucin recently. He did a short video. Yeah, I've not watched it, but I did briefly see it on his channel. To do with going back to Lucin Pond, I believe. I guess the reason why Scott Natal hasn't really done many videos since, obviously busy with other stuff, but also the weather as well. With that easing off, I guess you can get down there easier and start checking about. Um, anything else? I'm thinking KW, Kurt Wadsworth and company were taking items that belong to Jim Brenner. Is Kurt Wadsworth in contact with Jim Brenner? I don't know. Kurt Wadsworth spent time there as well, so maybe the items belonged to him. I hope they weren't taking evidence. In the Salty Pancakes photo, it looks like items were moved to the right to clear the middle ground, maybe to make room for the grey object to be brought out, but clearly the black container is missing. You talk about the black container on the bookshelf, that one I was referring to. And maybe you're referring to something else, but I'll just highlight it anyway, just in case it might help you understand Patsy. 
as for that grain shed photo of SP Salty Pancakes, the one I showed where it was like a split screen on the left hand side, you had the nighttime footage of the grain shed by Justin Rounds, and then on the right, it was Salty Pancakes. As for the Justin Rounds photo in the dark, you saw things moved about, but that was more so to do with the Heavy D interview, and that type of stuff happened after August, later on, months ahead. Again. Um, anything else here? The grain shed and everything that exists around it sit directly on a north-south property line between three parcels, three different owners. The parcel west of the property line is half a mile square. Two parcels to the east split the half mile north-south. And there are one-fourth mile square. The shed and the dirt mound are on the half mile property. Okay. <laughs> When it comes to numbers and distance like that, I don't quite fully understand it. But, you know, it'll provide context for you, the viewer, when checking this out. Okay. Patsy also says, watch the video again. Starting at Salty Pancakes video, the grey object is sitting on the ground just to the right of the grain shed door. Don't know what it is, though it looks like some sort of person-sized tub. And from some of the comments last night, individually, there was a consistency in people agreeing with that, some kind of tub, some kind of basin or wash thing. Patsy says, Rubbermaid 150 gallon stock tank, 58 by 29 by 25, turned upside down in the truck bed. What's a 150 gallon stock tank? Is that for animals? Something to do with vehicles? I don't, know, I don't know. Cleo says, This is beyond anything I've seen. Couldn't watch anymore. I'll need to relax. It's too much for me right now. With your key points, info, etc. It blows my freaking mind. From people coming, going like nothing, etc. P.S. Thank you for your observations. You always deliver. Appreciate it, Cleo. There we go. IYQ2. Profile picture of a horse. Oh no, here we go. For your information, Salty did not take anything from the tool shed. Stop the fake news. The term fake news over time is heavily overused and used out of context for the wrong reasons. Fake news has lost its meaning over time. This Pratt, whoever it is, horsey horsey, my god. Hello horse, how you doing? <coughs> Calm down horse, you want a pear? You want an apple? Oh, sorry, it's gone rotten. What a shame. But this, from the looks of it, seems to be a salty pancakes viewer from the looks of it, defending pancakes. You look at their previous comments in the past, right? When things were on goody-goody terms, this person was like, yeah, yeah, it's funny, yeah. <coughs> but now it's not. Mm. The tides have changed. But it's to be expected, right? You think about it. Videos done back then could be to do with pancakes or the odd viewer in a neutral, light-hearted way. It was positive, positive responses, positive replies by those people. You look now, it's all snappy, snappy, bitchy, bitchy, right? Is that because one has gone after these people in more negative ways or insulted them? No. It's that one has insulted their leader and because they themselves can't seem to think for themselves or try and understand it from a different point of view, they just simply say, right, we can laugh together, we can communicate with each other, it's all fine and all good, yeah, 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 you can insult me in a funny way, light-hearted way, it's perfectly fine, but if you ever insult my leader, my big boy, my winner, my idol, my precious, then I'm going to have a problem with you. You see how... It evolves. You see that 
structure. You see the hierarchy. You see the enslavement, right? Mm, very interesting. This is an example of it here. And what you need to take in mind, IYQ2, seems like you got your IQ mixed up a little bit there, but don't worry. Um, if you actually bothered watching the video, not once did I say, as you can see, Salty Pancakes took this away. Never said that. I don't believe I even questioned whether he touched anything at all. The main focus of that video was about Kurt Wadsworth questioning him. And considering this person appears to be a Salty Pancakes viewer, you thought they would have related because of the whole pancakes going after Kurt Wadsworth in recent time. But oh no, they seem to think I'm taking it out on pancakes again, when in fact I was observing, I was questioning what Kurt was doing when there. I only pointed out pancakes because he was in the fucking shot with his fucking big potato head. Not my fault he gets in the bloody camera view. Didn't ask for it, but there you go. So... Very interesting, the interdimensional four-way cross-conflict of confusion. Mm. What does Indiana say? Salty said Kurt and Ty did. He said he saw them both loading stuff into the back of Kurt's truck. Now, Salty could just take the stand and inform the court just what the items that he saw Ty and Kurt loading into the back of Kurt's truck as stuff means stuff all to me. Wait, Ty? What was Ty doing? I didn't see Ty Corbin there. Or is this another event, Indiana? Can you um, clarify down below in the comments or the live chat? Are you referring to the grain shed footage we observed yesterday from Galore and Dellen's channel? Or is this yet another event which occurred at another point in time? Let me know. Smee Fishing. He said, plain as day. He didn't think Salty touched or took anything. Watched the video before commenting. Shout out to Smooth Fishing, Smooth Fishing, Smooth in, as in the way he leaves comments as well. Clear to understand, straight to the point. It's Ty Corbin, no sarcasm TV did not get shut down. You mad, bro? Why is it with this like gang type hood language in recent time? We got, you mad, bro? Or was it shit cussing, whisper, whisper? Shit, what, what, what? What, where are we? What are we doing? Do I need to get the gold chains out or something? You get the strap. No Bellevue, not that type of strap. Get the get the sock, I mean Glock. I mean, I don't know. Uh, cussing, cussing, who's cussing? Cousin, who's my cousin? I don't know. Cuss, 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 cuss. Dodgy American language at times. I think it's, um, is it Kaylee? When when they do the talk, with, where it sounds like the, the mouth is pushing outwards. Now I'm going a bit southern, unfortunately. Mm, gone a bit off. But yeah, more so on Starcasm TV. Yeah, Ty Corbin. The reason why I said that was, I don't know if you saw it, but I'll say it again, and hopefully you're listening, Ty Corbin. There was a YouTube account called Starcasm TV with a blue default profile picture and zero videos on their channel. Is that truly Starcasm TV or is it a fake impersonation account? Are you aware of this Ty Corbin? Anyone in the chat right now, pass this on to Ty Corbin so we get an understanding. Because in the past, I was aware of Starcasm TV. You had the cowboy mannequin dodgy big lip profile pic with the funny edited videos on their channel. Yeah. Then they went quiet for a little bit. Then they returned back. I think it was because of the Jim Terry drama in between. But they returned back. And then they went quiet again. And then next thing you know, I see this default profile popping up with the same username. And as we've seen in the past, you can get all these different accounts showing up, but not of the actual person and impersonation. So are we seeing that again? Let me know, Ty Corbin. And move on. Ty Corbin saying, I went to Wendover Police today. We will find out who's doing the swatting. Okay. Well, if an official statement or some kind of like official coverage update can be made, that will be good. If you're able to do that, Ty Corbin, that will be of help. 
Tom Evans saying, perfect, this guy has to be stopped with his high school pranks. Tom Evans there referring to salty pancakes. Confluence saying, I don't know what it will take for you to learn your lesson with some of these guys. If you're all in for Dylan, construct better boundaries, Ty. I do understand that. I think, but at the same time, I don't know if people are on that level, that depth. Do you know when it comes to cooperating with people, putting up with working or assisting with a group, maybe you don't want to, but there's a reason, there's for a greater cause. Maybe you may side with someone, listen to a group, affiliate just so you can get background information and then twist and turn, wiggle your way out afterwards to get away from it. Does that happen within the Dylan Rounds case? Not to that complexity, not to that standard. On a basic level of backstabbing, affiliating, disassociating, reconnecting, that's happened. But that's more to do with drama and falling out, making back up, then falling back out, right? The way it goes back forth, back forth, it's almost like someone pulling the trousers up and down very fast behind the grain shed. And I'm sure Graham does not want to be reminded of that, okay? He's seen the grain shed too many times, which is understandable. But as I said, if we open some new um, exhibition, abstract art, grain shed upside down, flip it upside down, then it might be a bit more refreshing to see. And if we don't get to that point, I'll just flip the fucking image upside down on my phone. <laughs> and then it might be of use. Okay. What does um, Ty say in response? I didn't get swatted. I didn't go to meet him and nothing happened to me. I went to the police. Nothing I have evidence. Oh, because I have evidence on who did it. Fair enough. Good. To even have communication with Salty, is it worth it at this point? Stay safe. Yeah, like, this is the thing. If you know some people are dangerous, isn't it just playing with fire? If you start, like, kind of talking to them and then backing out afterwards, back forth, back forth, right? I mean, let's be realistic. Let's acknowledge a point. Let's refer back to me. Whilst the pancake drama in the background has been going on here and there, right? Uh, he might be losing it at times. He might retaliate back at times. He might snap. And then, like, me popping on in to leave a comment to the shack lady, which then triggers him even more. Is that playing with fire? Yes, but that's indirect playing with fire because I simply just said hello to the shack lady and he didn't seem to like that. But you get the idea. There's times where it's like, right, there's no point trying to communicate or there's no point even trying to say or do anything. Some people here and there may ask for emails and it's like, okay, understandable, but if there's alternative ways, then we'll do that. As for the email part, sometimes you get very choppy, risky waters, okay? Certain people that might be affiliated with others or certain behaviour which involves exposing people in the past, exposing phone call conversations, text conversations, private DMs, emails, that's all happened, Maybe not always to do with Dylan Rounds, but a rep within the community at least. That's happened a lot. That is too risky, too messy. Not going down that route, okay? Been successful up to now, so that's a positive. Let's move on. Just for mom, says the grey thing in the back of the truck is a water trough or trow trough, yeah? Vonda says, I told Salty that day it was a crime scene not to be there. Kurt had permission to be there to get his back out, which he didn't, by the way. Yeah, bit odd that. But then again, maybe upon seeing it, realising the tyre's gone down, gone flat, and his tools taken away, he probably thought, oh, I can't be bothered now, maybe. And it would be harder to move as well. You can't just drive it because... The tyre's flat. Anyway, Vonda says, which he didn't, yeah. Gloran Dolan was there, method man, whatever that means. Salty and Kurt and I believe his daughter. Not sure whom else. He's supposed to have picked up the horse supplies and dog supplies. He, Kurt, kept animals for Brenner. Pretty good for someone who's supposed to have killed your best friend, right? Yeah. 
finding out what Brenner has done and yet still looking out for Brenner with these supplies and looking after Brenner's horse. I understand it to an extent. And I also understand it from the perspective of despite Kurt doing all that for Brenner, whilst Brenner has been taken away, for killing Dylan, in which Dylan was friends with Kurt. And it's like, why would Kurt do any favours for Brenner after all that? Because at that time, Kurt would have been in denial. Maybe not even maybe not even reaching that stage, right? More so in recent time, what, 3rd of March, if I'm correct in saying, round there, that's when Brenner was charged with the murder of Dylan Rounds and desecration of the body. And even round that point, during that live stream on Pancake's channel, when it was up and running, and Kurt was with, was like, no, nah, Brenner didn't do it. No, you're stupid for thinking that. He wouldn't have done it. Not at all. And that was after that official charge made in recent time, Kurt being in denial. So if he's in denial right now, then back then, he probably wasn't even thinking at all. So he would look out for Brenner regardless. Okay? And because of hearing the backstories in the past about Brenner's horse, Briscoe being passed on to Kurt Wadsworth, Taylina for a certain amount of time, you can understand why you might need to take items away from the area. Maybe you couldn't do it at the time because it was still fresh. The family being there, Justin, Candice Cooley, the Rounds family, the police, search and rescue, etc. So once that eased over, a few months on, go down there, get the water trough, get some buckets, get some feed to be able to look after the horse more practically. I can understand how that ties in together. That probably, not 100%, but more than likely, proving that although it might not have been appropriate because of the whole Dylan Brown's case, Kurt had to get on with stuff and take items away for the, the benefit of looking after the horse. Okay, I understand that. Is there anything else here to look at? Not really. What's the response? Badger, I think Kurt just can't bring himself to believe Jim would kill Dylan. Yeah, denial. It might. It probably will kick in down the line, but still, it's going to take time. Oh. Badger says, I inquired about the items removed and they were Brenner's items used to care for his horse that Kurt took. And since Kurt was caregiver of Brenner's animals, that seems appropriate. There you go, straight to the point there, summarised. Dawn Marie, shout out to Marie, new viewer, saying, how does Lance afford hotel rooms and car repairs when he has no job? Amazing how he doesn't have that dog he begged for the money. Sad excuse from Manny. Uh, okay. Forced to pay it all back so people he swindled it out of. He makes me so mad I just want to smack the dumb out of him. Uh, mm. Wait, what's this comment? Oh, I keep clicking on the wrong thing. Trailer Park Supervisor. I'm enjoying these videos, even though the host is like Gareth from The Office. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Appreciate it. Shout out to Trailer Park Supervisor, new viewer. He's the guy that wanted to buy my wallpaper from the wardrobe, which isn't exactly available. But who the fuck is Gareth? Who is Gareth? What, do I look like Gareth or do I sound like Gareth? My tone, my pattern of voice, I don't know. I mean, surely those 15 plus accents is enough to confuse the mind when I do the different voices. Tom Evans says, Raph, you asked about the witness of the sun tunnels. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Okay. This comment here by Tom, we are going to go over in another video upcoming. And it will be a map analysis and it will be mapped out and we will be analysing it. We'll be taking a look critical to the 28th of May 2022. Make sure to be on the lookout for that. More to come. Jacqueline Rampley says, I see that the black tub slap 
slash box or whatever it is there on the shelf at the bottom of the grain shed in one photo but not the other true also items on shelf below has gone in one photo at night time no light showing at ground level at bottom end and no whole apex of roof this is just in rounds i'm talking about in salty pancakes these things are visible mm -hmm. yeah so looks like some things have been moving around with time the odd object taken away for what reason i don't know but it seems like we've come to a bit of a conclusion with and consistency with Kurt Wadsworth and why items were taken away the 21st of August. It being to do with Brenner's horse in the ownership care of Kurt Wadsworth Taylina, and they needed the equipment to be able to help the horse and look after it, in which those items were still at the Grangehead property. I understand that now. So I feel already in this video, it's been somewhat of a success. We've demonstrated consistency, consensus in ideas and what actually happened on that event back then, okay? Stuff that in the past would have been back and forth on, but yet yeah, we're just getting straight to the point, bang, 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 one after another, right? And we can keep doing that if there's things to cover or look back at, right? Why was it not done way back then, because we didn't have as much information then, okay? There was a lot more noise back then with more creators and um, people being present making the videos and all the drama deep within, which has faded out now and extracted. And as well, I didn't really know everything back then either, and I was doing my own video coverage. I wanted to get that stuff out the way first, and then I could look back at the other stuff in between. And it's worked out. So, Welcome if you're still watching, welcome if you have just joined. If you want to rewind back to the comments and the latest talk about Lance Kelly as well as the swatting, as well as clearing up the Kurt Wadsworth loose ends with the grain shed items taken away by Kurt, rewind back. What we are going to look at right now is the main part of this video, so hopefully you are ready. This is a little strange, okay? I've noticed it in recent time. I can provide a little bit of a backstory before we begin. So regarding Brenner's trailer, the burnt down trailer in Montello, Nevada, in which Brenner was at some years ago, it burnt down, supposedly accidental. After that, Brenner stayed with Kurt Wadsworth for a little bit, friendship, you know, and then was moved by choice, advised, prompted, a little bit in between, to go to Lucin and stay there and squat, as it's described by news articles and family, but actually stay there as a caretaker, look after the area, live there, and be in closer proximity with his longtime friend, Don Haightley. The burnt down trailer remained in Montello, Nevada, up to the Dylan Rounds case, so years on, and as we assumed, still to this day right now. But I don't think that's exactly true. From the looks of it, changes have been made. Things have disappeared. And I'm going to show you that satellite imagery right now, okay? We'll go on the platforms individually and then I'll do a slide show snapshot of where the trailer was and where it should be through the years. Okay, let's start off first with the 2019 Google Earth satellite imagery, then transition onto the 2022 Scribble Maps satellite imagery and then the 2023 Bing Maps satellite imagery. Let's go. Here we are first with that 2019 satellite imagery. On the right, you can see Bold Eagle Mountain. More to the west hand side, we zoom on in, we will see Brenner's trailer. We are facing north right now, and I'm going to maintain this angle for the other satellite imagery so it, we can keep it consistent and it's easier to follow. We zoom on in, you've got this dirt road here, middle of the screen, it does branch off slightly, as you see here, see that faded path, 
that goes down, that being Brenner's vehicle captured on camera in 2019. And follow the track, it goes up to the trailer, which is here. Okay? You can quite clearly see his trailer and some of the junk which is scattered about, but the trailer itself is in good condition because it did not burn down at this moment, this point in time. There's the coordinates on the screen if you wish to search for them yourself with some of the updated satellite imagery. Okay. I'll just zoom on out briefly. There you go, you can see the white object. Zoom out a bit more so we see the dirt road in focus, bottom of the screen. And you can see that white object even from this zoom, right? Let's now compare to the 2022 satellite imagery. Here we are on the 2022 satellite imagery in the same exact spot facing north. This time around, the difference being the name of the road is given, Tunnel Springs Road. Apologies about the quality. It's all we can do at this moment in time. Once again, you can see that dirt road branching on off as it spirals around. Same one as what we saw before. There's that little ditch where Brenner's car was at back in 2019. And we followed the track to this point here in which you can't see Brenner's trailer, but you can definitely make out there is like a black smudge mark. So under the assumption that 2022, this is Brenner's trailer or the remains of of it, okay, makes sense, right? You can see the burn mark, or you can at least see the, the, the structure, and I guess because with it being blurry, the map quality, it distorts the visual look of the remnants of the trailer. But you can quite clearly see this is where it's at. It matches up with the previous satellite imagery. We zoom on out, so the road is in sight, and there you go, that big black mark does appear. Now, let's compare that to the latest 2023 satellite imagery. Here is the 2023 satellite imagery. You look bottom right corner of the screen, it says 2023 TomTom, Tom, 2023 Maxa. Okay, this is the road. Just zoom on, there we go. Here's the road as you can see. But where is the turn off? That doesn't seem to show, right? It's like faded away with time. Is there any like indication or mark of where it could be? Not really, but this is the thing. If it's not been used ever since because Brenner's no longer there, because of course, you know, not just 2022, but years before that, Brenner coming on over to Lucent, right? And in that meantime, no more traffic going to Brenner's burnt down trailer because it's burnt down. You don't stay there anymore. So the man-made track marks will eventually fade away with time. Vegetation grows over it, right? But if we're looking roughly in the area, which is over here, although there's no track marks, where's the trailer? Can you honestly see any trailer? I can't. And I had this issue last time. I thought it was just me making a mistake, getting confused. But I looked and I looked and I could not find it, right? There's not even any remnants of burnt ground, not even any remnants of the trailer, the scrap left behind. And as we know, in 2022, whatever month it was, Lance Kelly did go down there on two different occasions, right, to investigate it. And yet, we can't see it. So I'll zoom on out. There's the road. And the trailer should be in this area here, middle of the screen. And there's no indication of it. No marker at all. Let's do a more direct slideshow comparison. Here we are with a still screenshot. I couldn't do a direct side-by-side -side comparison because it simply wouldn't fit into frame two images next to each other. And it wouldn't do it justice. So I've just basically time stamped it, as you can see on screen, kind of like what I used to do in the Kenny Veach days, 2019. And where that red circle is, the ring, that's identifying where Brenner's trailer, the burnt down one in Montello, Nevada, was at.
as you can see. I know it's not as clear, the image quality, but this is what happens when you take a screenshot of the satellite imagery. If you zoom in and take a screenshot, it's clearer that way than taking a screenshot zoomed out and then zooming in onto the screenshot, okay? But we already did that beforehand, zooming on in. I just wanted to show you the still photo shots. You could see the vast difference in the changes to the land, changes to the trailer, and the path roadways disappearing with time simply because they've not been used ever since because Brenner moving into Lucent. So you see where that red circle is? That's where Brenner's trailer's at. You can see the road down below here. You can see the cutoff point, which when you follow the trail, takes you to the trailer, right? So visualize that. This is 2022. You can see the, the dirt road a little bit more clearer this time as it comes off from the main Tunnel Springs Road, right? And where that circle is highlighted is the same exact spot as this one here. The difference being this is white because it's the trailer in its full glory. That one's black because it's the remnants, the burnt remains of the trailer. So the location has not changed, but the visual look has. But that ties in with the timeline and what's been previously said with Brenner's trailer burning down accidentally and blowing up. Okay, not too much of a difference when we go back and forth, 2019, 2022. But what about 2023? There is absolutely nothing left. Why all of a sudden, why now does Brenner's burnt down trailer need to be taken away, right? And just to clear up any possible counterpoints, what I want to say is in 2022, as you see here, the trailer appearing to remain, but obviously damaged and salvaged, like a wreckage, the scrap that's left of it, which still fair bit. During the year of 2022, whatever month it was, Lance Kelly did go down and document it for the first time ever, reported it to the police in which there was news coverage on it on YouTube. Lance Kelly's footage was used about it. Salty Pancakes footage was used as well, even though he wasn't even in the area. So I don't understand that. But the police went down to the trailer, investigated the area, used penetrating um, equipment, as well as canine dogs, as well as ATVs, the lot. And they didn't find anything at all. And that was it. Fast forward on, fast forward on a few months, Lance Kelly in 2022 returned back, noticed there was some blue rope wrapped around a tree, which was odd. There was a few markers to show that police have been there investigating in the past, as we've seen documented. And the trailer was still there, all the bits and bobs. And that was in 2022. Yet, 2023, after the investigation, long gone. All of a sudden, now, let's take the trailer away. What? What? Can you understand why it's a bit odd? You know... If the trailer was taken away back in 2022, during the time of the police investigation, I would understand that. They're taking potential evidence away to send to the labs to analyse forensics, right? But they didn't. They didn't. And they said that they didn't find any evidence either at the time. So why fast forward to 2023 and someone, something has taken it away? Now, who did it and why? This is yet another sub-mystery. What I do want to say, very quickly, if any of you have updated satellite imagery, check it out for yourself. I mean, we've zoomed in, we've looked, we're in the same exact location, okay? There's that road as it branches off there. Looks like, um, if you tilt your head, looks like a, a Y symbol. Same exact road as it branches off, Y symbol, right? Move over this way. 
that's where it's at. Zoom in here. Move over this way. Obviously, the, the dirt path is no longer there because it's not been in use. Increase the radius. Nothing at all. You know, there's no white trailer, of course. But there's not even a black mark. Not even the remains of the trailer itself. There's absolutely nothing at all. And I just, I just don't understand why it's disappeared, right? If no evidence was found in this area, then why does the trailer have to be taken away? And I know people will say, yeah, but, you know, it's just part of the community. Oh, we just take it away. We take things, we clear things up. No, I don't think so. You got people burying stuff left, right, and center. It's like a fucking massive treasure island on a big desert, right? As well, take in mind, this happened years ago, Brenner's trailer burning down. And not much was done back then. Not much done since until 2023. So can anyone explain this to me? Anyone in the chat focused? Can you give your thoughts, ideas? If you've got a bigger backstory, but you can't fit it into the chat, the character limit exceeds it, just comment down below in the comment section because we need to get to the bottom of this, right? I mean, okay, Lance covered it, uploaded it to YouTube, documented it. Maybe with time, someone went down there and stole the stuff for, oh, this is us you, um, useful scrap. We'll take it. This will be beneficial, maybe. But still, from 2022 to 2023, it still took some time for people to take action, right? Is it part of Kurt Wadsworth? Did Kurt Wadsworth do it? If Kurt Wadsworth was taking items from the grain shed to help Brenner, was Kurt trying to take items from Brenner's original burnt-down trailer to help in some way there as well? I don't know. Because there has been levels of activity at the burnt-down trailer back in 2022, Mum son, when Lance revisited, he noticed there was track marks, he noticed there was things in the ground like someone was prodding away, right? Actually, a little bit more context on that. It wasn't mum's after. The one that was mum's after is where that blue rope was wrapped around a tree. Um, Lance was wondering what was going on there. As for the track marks, the actual track marks by an ATV or some kind of vehicle, small vehicle, as well as the ground having holes in near where the spade was planted in the ground by whoever in the past. That was all documented two days before the police went down to investigate the area back in 2022. So even back then, someone went down to explore for themselves. And then fast forward months on, in between, someone went down there once again, or some people, but why? Tourist attraction, opportunistic behaviour, want to see it for themselves because they've seen it on YouTube and they wanted to see it in real life, maybe. Is it a Montello local or someone further afar? Is it an individual or a group of people? I don't know. Can we get down to the bottom of it? Maybe. But we need to keep this discussion going because I've not heard or seen it mentioned anywhere. Not at all. Like, what's happened? It's confusing. Now, could it be some kind of glitch, map, imagery? I don't know, because I'm looking right at it on screen right now, and I just do not see it. I can't be that blind. And yeah, there's a few dots here and there, but they're nowhere near the same size as the black dot, what we saw beforehand. And the rest of all that other stuff is vegetation, okay? So I, I, just, I just don't understand what's happened. Okay. Does it directly link with Dylan Brown's? Maybe not, but it's, well, to an extent, it's a possession of Brenner's, right? It was originally a place of interest, at least. And any activities in those sort of areas belonging to those type of people, especially Brenner, it makes you think, is someone clearing up in the background, the cleaner, clearing up traces, helping, assisting Brenner, who's behind bars or in custody. 
I don't know. I mean, it can't be Chase Venstra because Chase Venstra is uh, kind of like in custody as well, in, you know, in that way. Robert Aviles, well, he's been taken away as well in recent time to do with gun charges, I believe. Even though Taylina supposedly said it was more to do with burglary, so there's a bit of disparity there, but, you know. With certain people being out of the frame, it makes you think, well, who else could have gone to these areas and why? Hmm. I will do a follow-up video of this down the line if we do get more context, okay? But for now, it's just like an open discussion point. But anyone that's been down there since, can you report about it? Do you see the trailer? Is it some kind of satellite imagery fault? Or has it genuinely gone? And do you know where and who? Considering it's been there all these years, why now? Why now? Here we are back centred in Lucin, Utah. And this is regarding Ricky's coordinates. Click this one, it will take us to it right now. This is closer to Dylan's farm, which is, I think, 0.87 miles south of Dylan's farm, which is also in between and close further south from the Little Pigeon Mountains where those campers hikers were at when they witnessed Dylan's farm in use the 27th of May 2022 at 11.30pm up to 11.45 p.m. Okay. But this area, which the coordinates have been provided, Ricky said this area is where there's like gravel area. Now, I did also check the 2023 imagery, which wasn't as good as this in terms of clarity, but there's not really much difference from now till back here in 2019. So I'm just using this one for ease of use. But one thing I will say is I don't know if the coordinates are correct, Ricky, because what we're actually looking at is the pond area, which people refer to as Dylan's fish pond, fishing pond. I don't know if there were fish within it, but it's definitely a pond I can confirm by the shape, the colour and the look of it right? So it's not gravel. But where is the gravel? That's the question. I don't see any gravel pits. That looks like a dirt mound or natural rock mound. There's like a, a patch here. The terrain or the quality looks a little bit different, the texture of it. Because how do, how do I word it? There's been talks here and there, something to do with Chase Venstra at one point in the past, and then something to do with Don Haley at one point in the past, where there might be these parcels of land, maybe not owned by them, but on that land there appears to be like gravel resources and it's being used, paid for, to be able to be used elsewhere by these individuals, where it be for their own personal use, their home, fixing their own road, where it's all being dirt road and desert like terrain trying to managing it possibly i guess some people were just documenting these levels of activity to see where it was going because you think of gravel you think of dirt it can be used to fill in holes right and if you did bury dylan you might use that gravel to fill in a hole though i guess one thing to take in mind stuff like that is a different color right actual gravel or tarmac black that's going to stand out like a sore thumb in the middle of a desert, right? Most likely you'd be using dirt in those situations, not gravel. Unless Americans use alternative dodgy language, which means one thing than the other. Maybe, but well, at least the way it's worded in the UK, gravel is gravel. Grey gravel, most of the time. Of course, you can see these dirt roads which go off left, right and centre, but I just do not see any gravel pit so, Ricky, if you can provide an update, clarity, feel free to do so. But this pond here is not far from Dylan's farm, which is here. Okay? And little pigeon mountains being in this area here, when you see these lumps and bumps. Okay? Sometimes the name of it does show up, but it doesn't always, which is a bit annoying. 
Don't know why it does that. Uneven terrain there from the looks of it. Hmm. And we can't do street view imagery if you're wondering. It's a shame, but it is what it is. Um, do we need to check the distance just to double check? I guess there's no harm in doing so. It will be under a mile. So it should be. Obviously, you probably could convert it. About 4,720 foot away from Dylan's farm, south. Okay. So now, what we'll finish off with is that bar, the Area 52 bar. Now, as I said, if you type it in in the past, it won't come up, okay? I could type it in now just to prove it to you. Area 52 Road, Montello, Nevada. It comes up with a road, but not the name of the bar, okay? As you can quite clearly see, there are no buildings present in this area, right? Nothing. It's just the name of the road, supposedly. Bit of a dodgy road to call, but is this to do with in relation to the base, Area 51? Or the other base, Area 52? Or a play on words? Or is it just... Just naturally named that for no other reason. Hmm. Quinton said the name of the bar is called Area 52. Though there is another name for it, and I'll try and type it on here. It's called Bar O Ranch. And, you know, if I'm corrected as being wrong or something, at least what Quinton provided as like an alternative to like some kind of map thing. Well, if you type it in like this, it will lead directly to the place or roughly the area. And this is what we're getting on screen. Yeah, of course, you've got a ranch. But supposedly, this is like the area. Are we facing north? Here we go. We're facing north. There's Bar O Ranch. Bald Eagle Mountain being around this area. Montello there. Can we do a distance check? You can roughly see the road as well. Interesting. So the Bar O Ranch, this supposed Area 52 bar, is about 11.6 miles away from Montello. Okay. As for... Going into Lucen, if you're at like Don's place, very rough. It's over like 27, round up to about 30 miles, right? Bit of a distance, okay. Just type it back in, there we go. No images, unfortunately. No street view either. It's a shame, but just work with what we've got. From the looks of it, farm related, right? See the fields, see some of the structures, the fencing, Established buildings and barns as well, sheds, more so here. Is that a figure of eight or two tyres? Huh, interesting. Is there any indication that there is a bar here? Hard to tell, right? But this was the location provided. We've actually got a vehicle in motion there, carrying a trailer, maybe an RV trailer. Supposedly, this is roughly the area where that Area 52 bar is and where Brenner, Don Haley went to in the past and where someone called Annie runs it. But I've also heard other people say it's a load of rubbish, it's a load of BS, it's got no link to Dylan whatsoever. All I wanted to do is try and roughly provide you the location and name of it on maps if you wish to look into it deeper okay you're aware of the distance of it now and what it's called when finding it if for whatever reason people need to correct me feel free to do so okay there appears to be like a pond there a fair sized one looks pretty dark as well a bit spooky and then where was that other thing what's this hmm interesting two rv trailers the car parts outside as well. Interesting. Sometimes you don't always see this when looking at it. I don't know if I even looked at this when I did my 
Montello map analysis in the past. I must have done because it would have stood out to me, this location. But I wouldn't have known the meaning of it in the past. But let me know your thoughts in the chat to what you think about this talk, these rumours in the past, right? Of course, rumours have come and gone, but not all have been truly answered. But we can do that now. So, I guess we'll see what happens next. Time will tell. If you have joined late, make sure to rewind back to the beginning to catch up on everything, right? And also check out the previous video too. Uh, what drama will come next? No clue. What piece of information will appear? Don't know. But what I do know is there is another Dylan Rounds video coming up soon. It's a relevant, important one to do the 28th, following on with the talk about the truck, but not the one with Kurt. Before that, and maybe more important, and Tom provided a bit of information as well so we can read that along and then map it out on the maps and try and make sense of it. That will be coming next time, whenever that is. If there's anything else in between breaking news, that will be covered too. But hopefully you learned something new in this video or was able to make sense of it at least. And let me know your thoughts about Brenner's trailer. What the hell happened to it? What happened? I'm confused, right? But yeah. Thanks for watching. We'll see what happens next. Goodbye and good night for now.